it must be hard to do lighting for us when I am so white and you are so red right now. Am I that red? Well, and then I you're wearing I'm a red. red hat and a red shirt. Or a match. You're like a fire engine. Look at my, my hat head, right? You're so cute. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 131. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it. Guess where I was today. Outside, <laughs> totally outside. It's funny, so people are gonna say, I know, we're gonna get stuff out in the comments, and why are you so red? I was officiating football games, we had four of them today. Now, tomorrow, or totally by Monday, tan. this is just gonna be tan, this is just what happens. Drives me crazy. And then people are gonna also say, like, aren't you wearing suntan lotion? Number one, I don't usually wear suntan lotion unless we make our own, because my personal belief is that suntan lotions have tons of chemicals and they actually cause cancer. Actually, there's a lot of ingredients in there that are known to cause cancer. Also, I don't ever put suntan lotion on my face because when you're sweating, it all gets in your eyes. I did learn, by the way, not shaved. Do you know why? Why? It's only taken me about 12 years to learn. Don't shave before a whole morning of games because oh, yeah. it burns, right? The sweat goes in and it's burning. So don't even bother. I don't bother. I'm going to remember that for next time I'm out <laughs> not to shave my face. So it is Saturday when we're filming this. It's almost 6 o'clock. I haven't eaten anything except for one thing. On my I'm way coffee. out the door, not sponsored by the way, I brought one of these. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be a long day. I may want something. So I brought one of these and I decided, listen, I'm gonna have this now. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of energy for the long day. Nice. We're, I'm eating at Anthony's Driving, right? Which is the best. Which is the best. Uh, and because I helped fix his car yesterday. That's another story. So he owes you. So we, we're on our way up Some and he, he was like, that smells really good. Can I try that? Takes half of it. And he's like, this is like really good. He's like, like, and I'm like, yeah, it tastes like a payday. He was like, I swear it is a payday. Isn't it always funny when somebody that's not keto tastes something and they're like, wow, this is actually good. Right, right. It's like, I like good things. The Do you key think I'm just is, eating bad things? Yeah, what is the key is don't, as you say, Lion King it. This is keto. Yeah, don't do that. But a lot of times, I mean, he was like, these are really good. And so I'm gonna ask you guys to do me a favor. Now, normally we're like, go buy them. If, you know, I'm gonna ask, do me a favor, don't buy them until I get an opportunity to get more because I think he's gonna take like half what we have. Yeah, he will. So Probably. there is a link for him down below. There's no special sale, but there's always a link down below. Perfect Keto or huge supporters of Two Crazy Ketos. But I wanted to mention that now his car. Yes. Anthony learned a valuable lesson. What a nightmare. So he took his car in a couple of weeks ago. Got an itch. And uh, they said, oh, okay, the problem with it is the fuel pump. And we have an extended warranty on his car because it was our old car, so we just passed it over to him. So $100 deductible later, they put a new fuel pump in. Last week, the problem starts happening again. So you take it in and the guy goes, oh, it's the crankshaft sensor, position sensor. And we're like, Whatever didn't you say is. it was a fuel pump? And he's like, well, we thought it was, but it's not. And it could have been either one. And we're like, okay. So he's like, we have to order the part. All right. So now we go up, the part comes in yesterday. We go up to, you know, drop it off. And the guy calls, he's like, the warranty company is not going to cover it. They say it's not covered. Right, row. Right. Now, according to all the paperwork, it is covered. So now we have to argue with them. So the guy's like, well, it's going to be about $800. So I quickly like look it up. The part is depending on where you get it, like you can get it on Amazon for 20 bucks or you can get it from your local place for like 90. I said to Anthony, I don't trust the one on Amazon. Let's get it for 90. 
it took, no kidding, five minutes to fix it. Wow. Five minutes to fix it and they were gonna charge him $800. So what Anthony learned is, if you're at all handy, before you go up to the shop. Check it out on YouTube. Do a Google search, because Google is your friend, yeah. of all of the symptoms, and he did. He went in and he, he typed in like, it stalls out, hesitant to start, and every single Google search came back with crankshaft position sensor. Don't do your own surgery. That would be my That would advice. be bad. Don't perm your own hair. I've learned that. Right. But check out if there's just like handy stuff to do. Yeah. Well, what he learned was we do have an extended warranty, but it's got a $100 deductible on it. Sometimes it's cheaper to just do it on your own than even bother with the deductible. But we did get his car fixed. I'm glad. So glad. And we were able to save him a bunch of money because they were just going to charge him and he didn't know and... We were able to get it fixed and we got you an oil change. Did I hear meatballs ready? I you felt did. like I heard a, you, a beep. You did, which means we need to get through keto on the couch really, really quickly because I want to eat. I'm so ready. What did you do today? I went shopping because I had no cute tennis shoes. You went shopping and brought me the coolest present ever because I you did. are the most awesome wife. You know what? This really makes you awesome because Rachel doesn't do presents. I don't. Except for holidays. Your birthday I usually, She's usually just, Christmas. you want to go get it. Well, right. she surprised me with a present today. It was an ice cream maker. Well, it's not just an ice cream maker. It's a it's, ninja. It's the Ninja Creamy. It does all kinds of things. Ice creams, milkshakes, Pictures smoothies. All over it. But the only difference is, is this, you're going to take a blunt guy. So when you used to take your keto chow and put it in there and then just scoop it out, now you can put it into the cup, the same thing, and then turn it into a milkshake or an ice cream. It just has to be frozen prior. I just saw Gadget. Mm -hmm. It was new. Mm -hmm. It was in Bed Bath & Beyond. You're awesome. I found a 20% so off coupon. I've got some good plans for this. Took a hunk out of it. And I thought, I got to get it before he gets it. <laughs> and then I don't have a present Well, you're awesome. Can I have a kiss for that? Yes. Okay. Okay, you want to tell us about your shoes now? Yes, they're super cute. <laughs> I'm very excited. But here's the thing. We had gone to Skechers uh -huh. to find shoes. That was a nightmare. And well, and they're like, they're so expensive. It was like $80 for just a pair of tennis shoes. And I'm like, who do you think you are? Right. Like, this isn't Nike, it's They Skechers. were like 110 for mine. They used to be 50. Right. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to check out Burlington Coat Factory, Ross, TJ Maxx, and see if I can find a pair of sneakers there. And I found two for the price of one. And That's one awesome. of them was Skechers, but it only cost me $35. Do I get a fashion show later? You absolutely do. Okay. And then I, I bought one pair of sneakers that, that are so me. Let me tell you. Wait till you see them. I Outrageous. I wanted to get her the roller skates that we found in Skechers. Yeah. They had the old-fashioned roller skates. She's like, I really want them. She wouldn't let me buy them because she's cheap with herself. I she's am. not cheap with me. She buys me a Ninja Creamy, even though I already have an ice cream maker. But you're cheap with yourself. But it was very frustrating because I was going to get them anyway without her knowing. And I have like thirty dollars in rewards, and they're like, "Sorry, can't use this. Can't use the rewards on any men's shoes." I'm like, "Okay," and you can't use them on them. I'm like, "Then what good are the rewards?" You know what? Maybe we'll p find a pair of roller skates right. that are more affordable closer to Christmas time. Let's do this. We need to take a quick commercial break because that beeping sound is going to annoy me for the next forty me minutes. Me too. We got some friend mail. We did. That was the other thing I needed to do was stop by the, the post office and okay. get some uh, mail from Shell Blaylock. Thank okay. you so much. Says, I wanted to send you this sugar replacement to play with. Enjoy your gift. Well, thank you so much. Let's I've heard a, about this. It's it's from Kabocha or Kaboka. It's extract. Mm -hmm. And that's all that's in there. Boca Sweet. Oh, this is Packets. Very nice. I know. You, I think you can get it in granular too. So zero net carbs, minuscule calories in Book of Sweet do not affect blood sugar or your weight. A pentatose sugar is a class of uh, monosaccharides that are used uh, by the body as a source of energy. I actually know, I know that serious keto has messed with this. I have not experimented with it at all. I don't know how it reacts to my body. I'm so excited to try it though. I also know that serious keto just did a thing of like, which like sweeteners caramelize. So I'm gonna leave a link for that up here. Go Ooh. check that out, Let's but let's try this. Let's try a little. 
Thanks so much for thinking of us, Shell. I really appreciate that. We can feel like, oh, it looks like sugar. It totally is granular. I feel like we can do uh, more the pixie sticks. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It tastes like sugar. You would totally swear that sugar. That's pretty good. Wow. So it's three total carbohydrates for one of these packets, a teaspoon. That's yep. actually a carbohydrate less than what Very you good. would have in erythritol because erythritol is four carbohydrates. It does have a melt in your mouth type of thing. It says we'll to, to use it. You use it just like cane sugar as a healthy replacement in all your favorite cooking, baking, and beverage recipes. It dissolves, cooks, and bakes on a one-to-one -one ratio to cane sugar. Okay. Well, the ingredients are kabucha extract. Or kaboka. Or kaboka. I'm sure kaboka. we're saying it wrong. I don't know. We always pronounce things wrong. But it's neat. Somebody will correct us. We Thank usually you. do get corrected. Thank you very much. This we is really exciting because I do want to mess with this. And it tastes very good. We can be putting that in some of our stuff. Of course. No cooling effect. We're going to have to wait a while. Because, well, we can take it with us take to Cheetah Palooza. Because you guys are going to see this coffee. on Monday. Tomorrow morning, so long as there's no rain today when you're watching it, we will be on the road, on the road again. On the road again. We're going to be driving to Kentucky, to Louisville, for Keto Palooza. I'm super excited. We get to hang out with all of you guys. We get to hang so out with Autumn. Excited. We get to hang out with uh, Dr. Barry is going to be there. Chris and Miriam are going to be there. My buddy Steve with his plasma cutter is going to be there. Dance. Bronson is going to be there. So I'm super, super excited. But then when we get back, we're going to be doing 25 days of beef, beef butter, butter, bacon, and, and eggs. eggs. I, we, I, we always want to say like something else. High four. High four? High four. <laughs> High four, because it's just that. We are going to clarify with Dr. Barry. Even though you can make this whatever you want. If you, we're you, not even asking anybody to participate. We're doing this do for it. ourselves. Yes. But we're going to clarify for, with Dr. Barry with if you were doing this for his $1,000 challenge. Right. What would the rules be? Like, can you have a little bit of stevia in your coffee? Can you even have coffee? Can you have a zevia? Let me a can of zevia. So I, we're going to abide by the rules that he would set if you were trying to get the thousand dollars. Yeah. But it's completely up to you. He did tell me we can have zero carb spices. So for me, that would include a little bit of mustard because mustard is zero carb. Now it doesn't mean an entire thing of mustard. Don't like just but a little it. bit. Yeah. But I'm excited because I've got a, a new I got a new present coming, which we're not gonna tell you right now. You're gonna have to make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button. But it's supposed to be delivered on the Friday that we're gone, and it's really going to help with this challenge for us. You think so? Well, 25 days of nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And uh, oh, by the way, I don't like to cook in the house because it's summertime. I mean, look Ooh. at look at me. It was 100 degrees on the field today. Well, uh, it was miserable. Yeah. I mean, just going from like one store to the other, the parking lot, I felt like I was gonna melt. So yeah, I'm all about continuing to cook outside. outside. This is not like other states. Try <laughs> doing an oil change on your car. I am so and then sorry. Changing Anthony's crankshaft's position sensor. No reason to complain. In the heat of the day yesterday, also with Anthony's car, right after he got it home. So every time I put my hand up, I'm burning my hand on the engine. But we so had to sorry. leave an hour later, so. It was like, do it now, or when do you do it? So thank you. Are you ready to get into comments? We're going out into the heat. You yes, I get am. Into comments. Okay. Sure. So we already had an ad break, so we're not going to take another one because I don't like to have more than two in one of the keto on the couches. Which, by the way, thank you for watching ads. If you do, yeah. If you don't like ads, I highly suggest YouTube Premium. I Change your life. Love it. We gave it as a gift to Chris and Miriam like two years ago. Ain't and no going back now. They're like, I can't watch a video with ads anymore. But it really does help support the channel. On Keto on the Catch, we do like to limit it to two ads. If we didn't, uh, there would be like 50 in here because yeah. YouTube just sticks you them in. You decide or they decide. That's right. So we don't put them in other videos, just in here. The other videos are all before and after. But thank you very much. So Keto on the Couch, if you are new to our channel, is all about subscribers. And we like to celebrate your wins. We like to give you guys some inspiration to motivate you, read comments. We're going to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. Get it. And this week's is Blaine. Blaine. Blaine said, when we make a mistake in our keto journey, we move on and enjoy what we have. So good. Don't let your mistakes stop you. The benefits of a keto life outweigh the frustration of our mistakes. Last night I made a meatloaf. I forgot to add the eggs to bind it together. Did I throw out the meatloaf? No of way. course not. It was delicious. 
We all make mistakes. We don't abandon things. We make the best of what we're handed. My meatloaf casserole was delicious, if not loafy. Wow, Blaine. Thank you for that reminder because, you know, we can see in that situation, of course, you're not going to throw it out. Right. And yet we will throw out our health plans yes. when something doesn't go quite right. A lot of times I'm guilty of throwing out a day. Like I just want to throw in the towel from the day if one thing does not go as planned. And that is such a great reminder because again, you had something delicious. I'm glad you said that because I was going to say, I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They go on their day and somewhere in the day they slip up. Yeah. Maybe they have a little bit of sugar or maybe, you know what, they forgot and they grabbed the cookie. I had a plate time one time where I went out to eat and I ordered a Diet Coke and they gave me a Coke and halfway through it, I'm like, this seems a little bit too sweet. Right. And so now I've learned like from Chris, actually, you can actually take glucose strips with you and dip them in there. And if there's sugar in there, it'll that actually show and you can cut them in half so you don't have to waste the whole thing. But anyway, I could have thrown out that day and be like, well, I had sugar done for the day and now the rest of the day I'm going to eat sugar. If you screw up through the day, if somehow you go off plan, either on purpose or by accident, don't throw out the whole day. No. Just move on. You know what? I'm going to do better on my next meal or my next snack. Yes. Don't, because you know what happens when you do that, when you throw out your day, the, the bad meal becomes a bad day, which becomes a bad week, which becomes a bad month. And then the next thing you know, you never go back. That's been my experience. <laughs> okay. Now we do have a couple of subscriber of the weeks. Now, what the subscriber of the weeks are is people who put up their stories and we ask you, please share your stories. I had to struggle to find some this week. Please share your stories. We're not asking you for your story because we need content. We're asking you for your story because it's going to motivate somebody. It's going to wow. inspire somebody. There is somebody out there right now who's going through what you've gone through or what you are currently going through and they think they're alone. They think nobody gets it. I saw a post just this morning from someone who's like, please don't delete me from the group, but I'm going through this and I need to talk about it. And wow. I'm like, oh my gosh. We're never no. gonna delete you for that. The only way you're gonna get deleted from our group is if you constantly violate our rules, yes. like posting a bunch of live streams or trying to sell multi-level marketing stuff. It is hard to get booted. Yes, We make yeah. it hard. So it's important that you share your stories because somebody else out there needs you. And it doesn't matter if you are a day in, a week in, an hour in, wherever you are in your journey, your story is important to somebody. So please, please share your story. Go join our Facebook family group. The link is down below. So the first subscriber of the week is Robin. Hey Robin. Robin said, I am happy to say in the past year, my husband has joined me on this journey, so great. which led my keto lifestyle so much easier for me, made my keto lifestyle. Before he joined me, I was the only weird one in the family oh. and we are a big family. I'm told one bite won't hurt. Oh, come on, this is just one time. Yeah. I've paid for food and I didn't even touch family events because we split it three ways for gatherings. I'm that one who, that they look at and say, what is that? Looking with caution, but curious, and then they dig in and eat all of their carbs. But through it all, I've stuck to the goal. The goal of better health, weight loss, having children and depression did a number on my body less pain from inflammation, sciatica, and arthritis. I am happy to say that after an 18 month stall with God by my side and my determination, I have not only seen inches slowly melt away, but I'm finally seeing pounds melt away. In the last two months, I've switched it up a bit and I've had a motto in my head. I hear it each time I step out the door to walk. If Rachel can do it, I can do it. So I pick this 54 year old body up and I walk and I walk and I walk. Wow, Robin, <laughs> way to go girl, way to go. Wow, gosh, you just really blessed my whole week. Thanks for sharing that because I'm right there with you. Somebody is going to get up this week and they're going to say, if Robin can do it, that's right. I can do it because you shared your story and you didn't keep it to yourself. and. What I was really blessed with is your attitude through this whole situation. It has to be hard 
when a family wants to split things three ways mm -hmm. and you're like, yep, I'm going to put my money in knowing good and well that I'm paying for things that I can't eat, but I'm trying to keep the peace in my family. I'm not trying to preach to everybody and, and force them to eat the way I do. You know, you're not complaining, right? You're just, you're, you're just trying to be a good family member. And that is hard. It is hard in the midst of other people not supporting your goals. But I feel like you were such a testimony to, to doing it God's way, right? Like just, just being an encourager, not just making it so complainy, but just trying to be a peacemaker, you know, when you can. And wow, what, how honoring is it that your husband's joined you and you're enjoying good success. And I feel so blessed to know you and to know that Hey, you're thinking of me too while you're walking and I'm going to be thinking about you this week and I'm just so proud of you and excited for your future. Okay. Next one is from Bridget. Hey Bridget. Bridget said, I'm new to the group, but have been watching this channel for a while. I was moved to join and share today after watching today's keto on the couch and hearing Rachel speak about her mom and dad at the end. Back in 2017, I first started intermittent fasting and keto after discovering Dr. Fung and his lectures about obesity and type two diabetes. I was 270 pounds, and while I'd never been diagnosed myself, my mom had died from complications from type 2 diabetes in 2010. I became obsessed with learning everything I could, renewing my anger at my mom's doctors and diet culture in general, but also motivating me to do something about my own weight and my potential future on insulin. In two years of intermittent fasting and keto, I've lost almost 100 pounds, wow. and I was constantly imagining finding it 10 years earlier and doing it with my mom. I've, I've had and continue to have a bit of a journey with keto with a layover in cancer town a couple years ago, but I'm currently a year back on track and I've reached a new low weight of 165 pounds, <laughs> less than I weighed when I was a senior in high school. And I'm still fantasizing about how things could have been different for my mom. Oh my goodness. Wow. Keep going. Keep going. I love that shirt. And I'm sorry, this is a, apparently going to be a tearjerker keto on the couch, but I'm so proud of you. And I know that your mom is proud of you too. We have to let go of that guilt that we couldn't have done anything with, right? Like there, I didn't know about keto when my dad passed away. You know, I, I didn't make any changes because I didn't know any better. Now that we know better, we're doing better and you are going to be a blessing to other families. Mm -hmm. And that's our prayer, is that we will help other families. Okay, we do have one more. I know I said it was hard to find, but at the very end, I just all of a sudden stumbled across all these stories like, and they all had to hey, make it, boom, okay? Boom, boom. So this one is from Lisa. Hey Lisa. Said, here goes. I tried to make this as colorful as possible as posting images is hard to do. Aww. Here's my journey. I love food, but I couldn't do the yo-yo weight anymore. And carbs aren't good for my body, my mind, or and my spirit on any level. I've been keto for 16 months and it's a lifestyle with no issue. I do have a question. These flavored coffees that I see like Bananas Foster and Pumpkin, does anybody know if there was sugar? No nutritional guides are available. Good question. I've reached out to a few companies. Congratulations to those who are also on this journey. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. My credo. That is such a good, oh my goodness, Lisa. Wow. Hot mama. I mean, my gracious. It doesn't look like you are old enough to have one of those like Olin Mills or like the, you know, when you used to get, what was it in the mall? It was like the fancy, you know, no idea. outfits. I forgot. Somebody will say down below or I will remember it at two o'clock in the morning. You used to go and get um, your pictures done, but you don't look old enough to be able to have glamour had shots. Glamour shots. That's it. You don't look old enough to have even been alive during that reminds shots. me i need to go to the mall tomorrow or monday somehow in this busy heck because i need glasses because my glasses got ruined and i can't do this you drive without do. glasses you are gonna need some glasses okay so i do want to answer your question the flavored coffees uh it really depends on where you're getting it from like for example the bones coffee i know they do not have any sugar the only thing you do have to worry about with some of the flavored coffees depending on what you're trying to accomplish and how clean you want your ingredients to be is a lot of them do use artificial or natural flavors, which there's not much natural about natural flavors a lot of times, uh, to um, basically flavor the coffees. Well, they'll take them as they'll roast them in an oil or they'll kind of shift them around in flavors. 
a good one that we've always liked is like bourbon coffee, which is Ooh, usually yes. where they kind of roast them, where they let them sit in so bourbon good. barrels. Uh, so it really depends. I can tell you, I know that Bones Coffee doesn't have any sugar, but most of just the flavored beans, they don't have sugar, but they are flavored with either artificial or natural flavors. I picture a plant that's like growing like natural flavors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into the comments. The first one is gonna be from True Blue Bell. Hey, True Blue Bell. I'm gonna say that correctly. When you spoke about not wanting people to see what you were eating or what was in your grocery cart, that completely resonated with me. I have another theory though. I might be the only person that feels this way, but once I started getting healthy, I realized it wasn't other people judging me. It was me judging me. I 100% knew that the way I was eating was horrible, but it didn't stop me. I would bury bags of cookies under toilet paper and paper towels, even on the conveyor belt, thinking I was hiding it from the people around me. I honestly don't think they cared one way or another, but I would skulk away to the car with my head down regardless. I was ashamed of me because I knew better and you're right. People will openly look in my cart now, then look at me and raise their eyebrows. I guess a cart full of meat, cheese, butter, and eggs is the abnormality or anon anon anomaly, anomaly <laughs> an enema. Um, but I just looked them right in the face and smiled because I'm no longer judging myself. I reversed diabetes, my thyroid is now normal, and I'm off levothric oxen. I am shaking my head this whole time That's going, me. yes, yes. And I don't think people, I mean, I'm sure there were a few people judging me with the giant batches of cookies. But not everybody. But I think more than people judging me, it was absolutely me judging me. It was my embarrassment of my weight. And we've talked about, like, even why we started this channel, how we would walk with our head looking down, never looking up. Why? We were embarrassed of ourselves. And, yeah. we, and again, we're not saying that's where you guys were. That was definitely me. I, and it wasn't until we started talking about one day, like we didn't even know we walked with our head down. Like why were we walking? Oh, I was just embarrassed of myself. I was embarrassed with the way I looked, the way I felt. And so, yeah, I think sometimes we're really hard on ourselves. And we talk about like even me looking in the mirror, right? I still look in the mirror. I still see the 285 pound Joe. That's what I see even today when I look in the mirror. And that's why we keep saying the scale is a devil and, and the, the mirror, mirror is, is a liar. liar. Yeah, and I mean, I, there were definitely times that like my looking down had to do with past experiences where there was no seat at the lunch table for me. But you definitely hit the nail on the head, I think as far as I was judging myself way more than probably other people were judging me. I would look in the cart and be like, no one needs six packages of Oreos. Wow. I knew better. I knew looking to this cart, there is no way that this is nutritionally sound for me. But right. yeah, I just, I would hide it. When she said, I, I put it Bury under it. the, I buried it under the, the paper towels. I, I'm so guilty of doing that. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Carla. Hey Carla. Carla said, yep. I remember clearly that fat makes you fat and like everyone else, I believed it. And I got fatter. Makes me angry that they do that kind of thing to us. I'm so thankful I learned about keto when I had to lose 29 pounds to have weight loss surgery and I never did Ooh. have that surgery. <laughs> so thank you, Paul. Carla, that is so stinking awesome. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. But yeah, I mean, they, who are they? Right. Who do they think they are? Right. And who do I think that they think they are? Mm -hmm. Like, even if they want to preside over my life, I can say like, no, no. Carly, congratulations on that 29 pound weight loss. That's and awesome. congratulations on not getting the surgery. No surgery. So many times we used to watch like the shows like 600 pound life and stuff. And where they would say like, hey, you have to lose X amount of weight to get the surgery. And you would see some of these people lose a lot of weight on almost a ketogenic diet because I know he would say like you're eating you know like low carbohydrate the higher protein and I can remember sitting back you know watching it after we discovered keto of course going well why didn't they just continue that instead of going through that hard work and what it does to your body and, and just continue that for a little while well I think you know a lot of times you know, he would operate on somebody that was way bigger than that person that was in the moment in mm -hmm. his office. 
But I think that it was a test for him to see how bad do you want this? Yeah. Like, are you ready? And and sometimes we all have to ask that question of ourselves. You say you want to change your body composition, or you say you want to start exercising, or you say you want to scrutinize ingredients and eat healthier. How bad do you want it? That's right. Is it just a pipe dream? Mm. Or are you putting some feet to your faith here right. and doing some you know measures to, to make a change? Yeah, I can say I want to increase my metabolism and I want to get out and exercise more. But if I'm not doing anything, is it my fault or, right. you know? You never laced up those sneakers. Right. Okay, next one is from Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. She says, I love you guys' t-shirts. I work at a restaurant. If I know you're wanting keto foods, I'll make sure to ask the cooks to use real eggs and not liquid eggs that they have. I'll also try to switch out potatoes for my customers. I've actually taught my fellow servers that usually if they ask for heavy whipping cream, it could be because they have a diet restriction and do some of them will come in the back and ask me what they should offer if that person doesn't want the That's whole awesome. fries. I love your vlogs. Please continue them. You two are such an inspiration to so many in the keto community. Kimberly, first of all, I want to say you. thank you for being a server and for doing those kind of things. And one thing I have found is that when you go to a restaurant, if you explain to, you know, whoever your waiter or waitress is, is like, hey, I have a dietary restriction, they're usually like on board with you. They yeah. will try to accommodate you. It's only when we get nasty with them. Right. And and I can understand that. So if you're going to go to a restaurant, please make sure that you're nice to them and explain to them. You don't have to be nasty and just say like, hey, I have a dietary restriction. I took Caleb out, we went out to Texas Roadhouse and I had ordered something and I asked the guy, does this have sugar in it? And he's like, no, I'm like, please make sure I cannot have any kind of sugar. He's like, okay, no problem. Now we go in like, make sure it's not sugar. Yes. That, well, nobody's gonna respond well to that. It's no. the same thing with, if you have questions for your doctor, just make sure we're doing it in the right way. Sweetly. Okay, next one is from Rita. Hey, Rita. Rita said, love the vlogs, love you keeping it real, love the product information you provide, along with all of the success stories. Thanks so much, Rita. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Queen Shelly Hughes. Hey, Queen Shelly. She says, the only time to weigh is first thing in the morning after peeing. <laughs> Naked on the scale. I'll weigh a half a, a pound more in 20 minutes. So stinking true. That is so true. Okay, so... I don't know why, because the scale is a devil and the mirror is a liar. But we got it anyway. But I got up this morning and I weighed myself and I wasn't extremely happy until I realized that I didn't eat until like 11 o'clock last night. I should have just not eaten. I, that's what I should have done. I should have done the right thing and not eaten. But I was like four or five pounds heavier today than I was yesterday, which is, I know, just water and the fact that I ate so late and I got up at like 5.30 this barely morning. Barely slept. Barely slept. So then I weighed myself right before I left and I was right back to all the five pounds was gone, right? So figure that one out. How did Magical I drop five pounds? Key. And by the way, I don't know about you all, I don't do the just one step on the scale. You gotta double check it two or three times. Well, what was right? it Katie was like, it doesn't count unless it's three times. Right? I came home from my games having not eaten anything except for a half a Nola bar because Anthony ate the other half. And I drank, I don't know, a Zip Fizz, two Relights, and then three bottles of just plain water. And I came home, I was a pound and a half heavier. Like, does that make any sense? And I sweated no. all day. No. It, it makes doesn't. no sense. So you, you really have to- Stay off the scale. Stay off the scale. And if you're already in a teetering mindset, really stay off the yes. scale. If you know yours, I mean, you know yourself, you right. know when you're like about to step on the scale and you're thinking to yourself, if this is bad news, I'm gonna lose it. Yeah. Just stay off the scale. Yep. Just stay off. Uh, next one is from Chris. Hey Chris. He said, so here's a tip. Take your hot dogs, slice them thinly, maybe an eighth of an inch, put them between two paper towels and then put them in a the microwave for 30 second blast. Mm. They will get really crispy, sort of dehydrated make it a great on the run snack. Smart. We learn this when showing dogs. Dog handlers will use them in the ring so they can keep the dog treats in their mouth and judges don't see them carrying treats in the ring. They are a bit salty, 
so they make a good munch snack. Brilliant. That is awesome. That is absolutely brilliant. What is brilliant? The way that they, the dog trainers have figured out a way around the rule. Better than holding Alpo in your mouth. Or the fact that that sounds really delicious. It sounds really delicious. We've been doing it in an air fryer. Yeah. And I am all about it because it becomes so crunchy and greasy. Yeah, but this is quicker so than the air fryer. We have to I try know. that. Uh, next one is from Tammy. Hey, Tammy. She says, no one would know that 10-year-old picture is you. Oh, thank you. I hope when you look in the mirror, you no longer see that person. You two are wonderful and keep me moving forward. Thank you for all you do. Tammy, thank you so much for, for saying those kind words. Sometimes I do look in the mirror and I see that gal again, um, but I'm starting to take more ground for victory. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to, to be more merciful and gracious to that girl and not just see her on the outside but see what she has to offer on the inside i think that it's a really good opportunity every time you have your birthday and this is our whole birthday month whether your birthday is in september or not you know our challenge this month is to live every day like it's your birthday and let's take a moment to just kind of celebrate what we offer on the inside of ourselves because there's more to us than just the outside yeah. Uh, next one is from Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. And Dwayne said, I agree. Swiss cheese is the best. Yuck. And warm melted Swiss is awesome. Yucky and stinky. I miss Swiss cheese fondue. But couldn't you do a Swiss cheese fondue using that bread? Yes, you absolutely could. We need to do that. Fondue is back, baby. We actually have some of that bread right now in the oven. Well, because you could also um, use like the bone broth and like cook your meats. You could do cheese Cheese on cheese. Okay, so we have a fondue set in the upper cabinet right thrift now. Thrift store. That we bought at a thrift store, still wrapped. We bought it about a month and a half before we went keto. So it, no kidding, it has, it's five years almost. Pristine. It's sitting up there, never we used it use once. That. Now we have to use it. That sounds fun. Uh, next one is from John. Hey John, Joe doesn't like avocado, but is an avocado in the lo <laughs> logo and is wearing a shirt with an avocado on it. Ha ha, love it. I also love Swiss cheese, my absolute favorite. Love the video and love that you made the bumper look like new. Great work. Okay, yes, Swiss cheese is awesome. No, it's not. No, I don't like avocado. I just don't like avocado. Don't you like guacamole? I do like, it's an acquired taste for me. It, it, for me, the biggest problem with avocado isn't the taste, it's the texture. The commission. Also the fact that when you buy one, you never know if it's gonna be good. And I know the little trick, by the time it's ripe, about an hour later, it's no longer ripe. It's beyond ripe, yeah. right? So, really but have to time I'm, your life I'm just not it. a big fan of the texture. Guacamole only on certain foods. Guacamole. Uh, next one is from Jan. Hey, Jan. She said, it's possible that your backyard eggs don't peel well because they are so fresh. Yeah, I figured yeah. that one out. But you can try boiling them with a tablespoon or two of salt in the water. Nice. Help separate the egg and the shell. Very okay, smart. we're gonna have to try that. We're definitely Although I usually that. do I do it in the pressure cooker. Maybe we'll try that. Thanks for the tip. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break and then we will come back with all the Facebook comments. Are you all packed and ready to go? I'll we'll pack on Tuesday morning. A trash bag and just start throwing stuff in it. Well, I have to figure out, like, how much are you taking and then how much room do I have left? Not much. <laughs> Not much. Okay, let's get into the Facebook comments. First one is from Mary. Hey, Mary. She says, question. I count total carbs but have never subtracted allulose or erythritol from anything. In this case, can I change the total carbs to five if there are five allulose? Okay, so it's a big debate with who you talk to, okay? Total carbs, in my personal opinion, is everything. Covers everything. Dr. Barry will tell you it's everything. Now in most people, okay, your body is not going to digest the erythritol, the allulose, the swerve, those kind of, like a true, true sugar alcohol. The problem is, is there are a lot of sugar alcohols that are out there that are sugar alcohols, but you do have an insulin reaction too. Like for example, xylitol, it's 13 glycemic on the glycemic index or maltitol, which is, I think it's 39 on the yeah. glycemic index. So those are technically sugar alcohols, but you are gonna have a glucose reaction to them. If you're looking at Swerve and Allulose, or Swerve, by the way, is just a brand name for erythritol, 
Some people deduct it, some people don't. Maria Emmerich will tell you, you can deduct that because it's not absorbed with your body. Our personal opinion is, it's up to you. Yeah. But if you are going to deduct it, still have some kind of a total carb cap. When I mean by total carb cap, like this is everything, like fiber, erythritol, allulose, all that stuff, and say that I can't have more than this. So maybe you're doing 20 net carbs, but say, you know what? I'm not gonna have more than 40. What is that gonna do? That's gonna allow you to have something with erythritol or allulose, because a lot of allulose products have a lot of allulose. And then you're still not gonna overdo it. Yeah, 40 total carbs. 40 total carbs. Like that 20 total, it's not a magic number. It just depends on what your body is gonna do. Sometimes I'm gonna deduct the allulose, sometimes I'm not. It depends on what's in the recipe and everything else. The one thing that we do not deduct is fiber with the exception of we don't generally count any of the fibers in like a vegetable, like God a true vegetable. Like, you know what, if there's a couple of grams of carbohydrates in my broccoli, I'm okay with deducting that fiber, you know, out of there. The other fiber that I have no problem deducting is acacia gum because I know that my body doesn't digest it and it actually is known to, number one, lower your glucose, but also it helps with producing MCTs. I just, for me personally, because you know, Joe does different things. I do total carbs. I've yep. got a total carb cap. And I find that there's room for vegetables. There's room for desserts when I want them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's rooms for different types of sausages yeah. or things that maybe have some, you know, uh, seasoning carbs. Yep. And it just makes it easier. It yeah. just makes life easier. It makes things easy. I mean, and one of the biggest places that people are going to say something like, well, what about keto chow? Keto chow is going to have like eight or nine total carbs. It's okay. But less than one gram of net carbs because it's all acacia gum and xanthan gum. But that's what I'm saying. You don't have to do 20 total carbs. You could do 30 total carbs. You know what's gonna be the worst thing that's gonna happen if you're gonna count all the acacia gum? At the end of the day, your body doesn't digest it and you actually only had three carbs. It's like overpaying your taxes and then getting a rebate. Yeah. You're not upset. And you're not upset about it at all. Uh, next one is gonna be from Susan. Hey Susan. Susan says, I wanna make the 2KK yogurt and I'm just wondering if I can use the Maple Hill no sugar milk. Not sure if yogurt is like kombucha and needs sugar. No, you cannot. Uh, that came out bad. Uh, it won't work, right. okay? You have to have sugar. Now, I did notice somebody making a comment about um, they don't understand the carbs. You need to go watch the videos. Also, you can go just into the recipe card for our yogurt and we explain it down below of where the carb, why we can say it's this low in carbs. But we are utilizing Fairlife milk, which has 50% of the sugar of regular milk. If you use just regular, say Borden milk or whatever brand is in your area, just regular whole milk, not ultra filtered 50% less sugar, you are gonna end up with a lot more carbs even after taking the whey out. What makes the Fairlife so good is it's 50% less sugar, but you have to have sugar in order to make yogurt. That's how the cultures work. Right. Okay, next one is from D. Hey D, non-scale victory, one hour on the treadmill, 30 minutes on the vibration plate and planks, plus a 12 hour day at work. That is awesome. Way to go. Yes. That is stinking awesome. And that's what we're talking about when we say share your story. It doesn't have to be a long story. It doesn't have to have anything to do with weight loss. That's gonna get my act together this week. Yeah. Cause you did that. Uh, next one is from Anita. Hey Anita. Anita says, does anybody have a keto friendly dish to pass for a picnic that they wouldn't mind sharing? Ooh, lots of I'll options. tell you when we have our coleslaw. Yeah. I will leave a link for it down below. Uh, if you're looking for a picnic, that coleslaw, I can't tell you how many times we've given it to people, including our kids, and they have they no it. idea there's no sugar in there. But yes, I would love to see everybody go right now down in the comment section and share what are some of your favorite picnic dishes? You know, I know we just passed Labor Day, but it's still, hey, it's not fall yet. Well, I am always happy to have all kinds of different sides. Even when we're going into the Thanksgiving and the holidays, I am not upset if on my Christmas table there's some coleslaw. That's like, right. Like, I will eat it all the time. And part of our subsistence 
Blah. Part of our September challenge is um, to share your recipes. And that's gonna be an ongoing thing. So yep. if you've got a recipe that you think is great, send it to Rachel at twocrazyketos.com. And if we use it in a future vlog, we will give you full credit for it. Yeah, and we have several. Some of them are not gonna come out until after we're done with our beef butter, a bacon and egg challenge because obviously we, can't make it. we won't be able to eat it. But and I'm not gonna share a recipe that I can't eat. But it's on the calendar. But there are a bunch of them that we're really excited about. Uh, next one is from a vet. Hey, a vet. A vet said, "Wow, keto chow root beer float made with diet root beer is delicious." Aww. Thanks, Joe. It is really good. And I know it sounds weird, and all I'm saying is, take your root beer keto chow, which Rachel is not the biggest fan of, and for the liquid. Use some root beer, and you could either use like one that's already carbonated, or you can maybe you have one that you left out overnight, and you know the fizz is gone. You're looking for the flavor. Yeah. Another thing that's really good, root beer keto chow. Turn it into ice cream, and then pour root beer over the top of it. I highly recommend the new creamy root beer from Zevia. It is very very tasty. Thanks for that comment, Yvette. We love you. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Jeannie. Hey Jeannie, I just made Joe and Rachel's protein custard. It's so much better than the one I tried with 14 hard boiled eggs. I was not a fan of that. Joe had said in the video that you had to eat it all at once. Is there a reason that you couldn't split it up into snacks? Okay, so it's been a while since I've watched that video, but what I will say is, if I said that, what I was referring to is if you're that you can, and that this is basically a meal of keto chow. So you're gonna eat whatever, however many you have. When we make it, we don't even put it into little, you know, cups anymore, ramekins. We literally make it in a loaf pan. Big dish. One for Rachel, one for me, eat the entire thing. One keto chow. Because that's our meal. We're yeah. eating that as our meal. And if you're eating that keto chow as a meal, you want to eat the whole thing because you're going to get all of your electrolytes and your nutrients. Because remember, every keto chow is one third of what you need for the day. But you can absolutely oh, yeah. just make it into a snack or a dessert. And we've done that where we'll make the custard or we'll even make our keto chow pancakes. We'll have a regular dinner, which I think we may even do tonight. Yum. And then make a batch of the yogurt or a batch of our custard or a batch of the pancakes and just have a little bit as like our dessert. Yeah, an accompaniment. Now also, if you didn't like the hard boiled egg pudding from Maria Emmerich, I'm gonna highly suggest you try the one that just uses egg whites because that's not nearly as eggy because it's the yolks that give you that sulfur smell and taste. But if you get the egg white version only, which is only available in her cookbooks, uh, that one is really good and has become Rachel's favorite. There's no farts. Next one is from Bridget. Hey Bridget. Bridget's a question. I have egg white powder and silicone bread molds in my Amazon cart ready to pull the trigger. Is it even possible to make protein sparing modified bread without a stand mixer? I'm motivated to get sore arms doing this if it's possible. I have a hand mixer and an immersion blender that has a whisk attachment. Anyone have success with either of those? Because a stand mixer is about number 100 on my splurge list, so it isn't happening anytime soon. Aww. So yes. You're not gonna be able to do it by hand. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It's it, you've got 12 egg whites, and you're gonna try to whip them into basically like a meringue, only more. You you would take it to stiff peaks of meringue, but even further. But you can do it with a hand mixer or with an immersion blender if you have the whisk attachment. If you're using a hand mixer, don't put the beaters. Get the whisk attachment. It's probably gonna take you a little bit longer than a stand mixer, but it is definitely possible if you use a whisk attachment. Well, I like that. I would also recommend the immersion blender over the hand blender because generally it's a little bit faster and a hand blender usually only comes with one whisk attachment, not two. Uh, next one is from Laura. Hey, Laura. She says, I changed my providers last year in hospital, couldn't get the support I needed, so change was needed. This made me so happy today and reassured me I did the right thing. Heart Health Magazine, they sent out. Some do pay attention. And it's a magazine saying keto is the most effective diet for weight loss. Wow. That wow. is really cool that that came from the doctor. That is awesome. That is really cool. Like, thank you so much for all of the physicians and healthcare workers out there that are starting this to be like, you know what? Maybe there is another option yes. than just saying, you know what? Eat some carbs. Calories is all that matters because counting calories, like Dr. Barry says, it's stupid. If you're just looking at calories, it's not just calories in, calories out. 
because there's a huge difference between 100 calories of protein and eating 100 calories of Oreos. Right. There just is. Okay, we have one more, and it's from Christina. Hey, Christina. Christina said, so am I understanding that the beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge should be expected to change my body composition? That sounds very appealing. Yes, and that was Dr. Barry's whole thing, is that if you eat only beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for 90 days, you might gain some pounds. You may lose, it depends on where you are in your journey. If right. you're extremely overweight, you're probably going to lose some weight. If you're maybe towards the end, you may gain some weight. You know, it depends on what were you eating prior. Mm -hmm. But you may gain some weight, but that weight is going to be bone density and muscle. And we've talked about that, like, even when we started our one-on-one -on -one challenge and we started working with Bronson, the scale may go up, but let's look at what is the fat percentage. Your fat percentage is probably going to go down, and then your muscle mass is probably going to go up. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing, and I am all about it. And it also is helpful for me to do challenges when I'm trying to eliminate some stuff that maybe I'm addicted to, like uh, bacon wrapped jalapenos. Yes. Because Ooh, there's we have bacon. A bunch of in the fridge right now. We better power through them because no more jalapenos and no more cream cheese for that time. So if there's a certain period of time where you're like, I need to disconnect from the peanut bowl, or I need to disconnect from keto desserts, it, this is a great opportunity. And again, nobody needs to do it with us. You're not like, you know, out of the club if you don't do it with us. We're only gonna be doing it for 25 days because that's what we have available mm -hmm. to participate. Um, but I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, I got a challenge for us. Oh no, another one? Yeah. What new layer? Well, beef, butter, bacon, and egg starts the day we leave. So it's actually one week from tomorrow, because tomorrow is Sunday, today's yeah. Saturday. One week from tomorrow, we start this. So that is, let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we have seven days. You do. Right? That's how the week works. How much cream cheese can I eat in seven days? Oh my gracious. How many jalapeno poppers can I eat in seven days? That should be the challenge. Punish your toilets. <laughs> Okay, speaking of which eating, I've got meatballs that are done in the oven. Yep. I've got bread done in the oven. Yum. I have jalapeno poppers in the refrigerator ready to go in the of oven. Of course, because it's happening. It is 6.48 in the evening, and I'm ready to eat. So that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Now, I do want to say we do have a live stream on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you hit that bell button. We are going to do our very best I don't know where to we're live doing stream this week. But again, we're going to be in Louisville. And I know we do have to go to an event on Thursday night. So we're going to try to do it. Try our best. We may even do it on Wednesday. So just make sure you're hitting the bell button and you're subscribed and you'll get the notification of when we do go live. But we are going to try to do it even though we're going to be on the road. Yeah. Now, please do us a favor. Give us some suggestions for future videos that you would like to see. Also, let us know, beef, butter, bacon, and egg, what are some of the things we should be eating? And please... Don't be coming and telling us that we need to eat a whole bunch of beef liver because I got to live with this woman. No, And then no. she's going to get mad at me no. for asking for suggestions. But I appreciate creativity so that beef we don't- Beef tongue? Oh, so we don't get bored. <laughs> Not to get gross. If you like seeing videos like this, please take a look at some of the other videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.